It's early morning, and this 18th century town of Comiso is slowly waking up. To whisk us away is the regional Minuetto. Powered by two V8 diesel engines, it may look small, but packs a combined 1,500 horsepower. In charge of our train is 36-year-old Marco, who's been working on this line for 16 years. I am a train manager. I do information to customers and control the ticket. This train is uh, modern, is uh, 160 seats. This line is used by uh, tourists for uh, three or four months and uh, also the commuter passenger. The train line is uh, spectacular, it's uh, the best of Sicily, in my opinion. And in the track, you can see the best of Baroque in Sicily. Following an earthquake in 1693, the old town was completely rebuilt in this dramatic Baroque style. Towering over the old town is the magnificent church of St. George, a treasure box made of stone. It's no wonder the city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. However, one of its greatest building achievements is not on top of the city's hills, but below them. We're about to encounter a lesser known masterpiece built 140 years ago. It's a true hidden gem of Sicilian railway engineering. My favorite part of the train line is the helicoil track from Modica to Ragusa. It's important for us because it's a special piece of engineering. For the next mile, our train is traveling down inside a mountain. Built when most locals traveled by horse and cart, it's an extraordinary feat of ingenuity and hard work. one that Emanuele has spent the last 40 years writing about. The biggest challenge was building these tunnels by hands. They were not sophisticated tools. They collected all the people to break stones by hands. It was on the 18th of June, 1893, that this incredible spiral tunnel section of the railway was finally opened. It's coming, that's it, here we are. It's a 668 train. My God, the beginning of the spiral track. It goes straight away a big circle of 300 as a radius. It goes out from that black hole of the tunnel. Uh, here we are. That's it. Ciao. We're on a serene and beautiful journey through Sicily heading to the highest, most active volcano in Europe. After 140 miles of rocky ravines and the glorious Baroque buildings of the southeast, we're now exploring the dark lava fields of the north. 
After Syracuse, we'll glide along the shimmering Ionian coast, crossing the old salt lakes of Augusta, and after 20 miles, we'll reach the city of Catania. Its unique microclimate makes it the perfect growing ground for blood oranges, brought to this area more than 200 years ago. Special 4x4 trucks take us on the final climb to the summit, crossing three recent lava flows. So now we are on 2,900 meters, very close to summit craters rumbling. This is the southeast crater, is the the youngest of all the summit craters on Mount Etna. Despite the volcano emitting 5,000 tonnes of sulphur dioxide every day, there seems to be no shortage of intrepid tourists. We have a lot of people today. In a normal period, we have 400 people that can turn around the summit craters. This is one of the most famous places for people and also for big cinema production. Take a look now, there's ash, it's coming, it's coming out. So now maybe there's a new phase of Southeast Crater with the emission of ash, still rumbling. To capture these spectacular explosions takes time, patience, and nerve. I have many favorite moments, but there's one for sure really important, and this is on top of Southeast Crater during sunset. There was a huge pressure of gases that melted the rocks. Never seen, never described it before, and it was really nice. We stayed about for two hours there, in silence, enjoying this uh, marvelous show and great footage for sure. Documenting Etna can be a risky business. During the 2017 eruptions, Giuseppe pushed his luck to the limit. We were really close, about one meter from the lava flow with uh, poisonous gases everywhere, very high temperature, close to 1,000 degrees Celsius. So it was a big challenge for us trying to save the equipment, try to shoot new footage, and enjoy also. Very big reward for sure. It's this great passion for the volcano and the breathtaking pictures that keep Giuseppe coming back time and time again.